Hi, I'm Jake Davis and I'm the project coordinator for Angel Shop Project Wales. Angel Shop Project Wales aims to safeguard one of the various shark species through fishery engagement, heritage and citizen science. Angel Shop Project Wales launched in June 2018 and is led by Zoological Society of London and Natural Resources Wales and kindly funded by Heritage Lottery Fund and Welsh Government. Following a pilot project in 2017 where we spoke to a few fishes in a pilot area which was on the Bikin Peninsula then developed the project into a larger project which now covers five main areas which is Hollyhead, Bikin Peninsula, North Park, Cardigan Bay, Pembrokeshire and Swansea Bay. However, we cover the whole of the Welsh projects. We're interested in angel shot records from all over the Welsh coast. So there's a team of three. I'm the project coordinator. Then we have Joanna Bark on the left, who is the, who is the project lead, and Ben Ray on the right, who is the project manager. And the fourth key person of the team is Angwen. She is a 3D model angel shark, which I carry around with me for public engagement and help to train fishes and handling angel sharks as well as how to take genetic samples. In addition, last summer we had Fenella, who was our eDNA scientist and she helped with us the eDNA element of the project which we carried out last year, which I'll talk about later. And the project had a range of partners from fishing associations to shark trusts and men's sheds and People's Collection Wales. And they all bring it together and help, to help develop the project. So the four major aims of Angel Shark Project Wales is to one, understand the status and ecology of angel sharks in Wales. Two, fishers are stewards of angel shark conservation. They're out on the water every day and they're the ones who are most likely to, catch, to accidentally catch angel sharks. Three, communities help to unlock angel shark heritage and are shared across the generations. Four, bringing the four major aims together to develop a Wales Angel Shark Action Plan and identify key steps to secure their future. And this step we currently are at now. Fisher engagement has been a, a, a real success for the project. We've been really fortunate to work with fishers all across Wales and working closely with fisher associations too. And in total, 73 fishers have provided records of which they're from different sectors. So we had commercial fishers, recreational, charter boat captains, and they all provide a range of information, not just on angel shark records, but also about fishing effort off the Welsh coast over the last 50 years, or even further, 70 years, 100 years, which should be really important to help better understand angel sharks off the Welsh coast. And to go back to the background of just a few examples of photos which were shared of us, shared to us as part of the project, and that they, they're real gems revealing more about the species. So from the photos, you can gather a lot of information about them like size and sex, which are really vital pieces of information to help better understand the population of angel sharks of the Welsh coast. But it wasn't just from fisher interviews that were carried out, um, helped better understand angel sharks, but we also developed a genetic kit, which, where, which takes mucus samples. We also trained the fishers using Angwen to take these samples, and we trained nearly 20 fishers in carrying these packs, and, they're given to people who are likely to catch angel sharks, who, all, who, may, who may have caught angel sharks in the past. So as you can see from the top bit, that's where we take, we ask the fishers to take a genetic sample. So it's basically just a kitchen scouring pad and you take two or three swipes of mucus from there and you put it into a pot of ethanol and then we can use that information then to better understand the population of angel sharks through DNA analysis. And what we're trying to do with this is trying to see the connectivity of angel shark populations throughout the northeast Atlantic and see whether the population of angel sharks of the Welsh coast are isolated or they're connected to other populations, which is really important to safeguard in the species. And hopefully throughout this, throughout this next couple of years, we can gather more of these genetic samples to really better understand the species. So last year, we carried out a small eDNA study where we sampled 22 sites across Wales. And as you can see, Ben, ben really enjoyed taking these samples. Uh, we got seven positive results, which was really exciting to us. However, the negative result doesn't mean there were no angel sharks there. There was just no angel shark DNA in that sample. Um, but understanding more about the eDNA is we need to do more strategic or more systematic sampling where we take more samples of throughout different times of year and also try and do some hydrographic hydrodynamic modeling that will really help them understand the movement of water and where these 
DNA particles or how far these DNA particles move within the water column. However, it was really successful and it does provide very good presence and absence data. As you can see, there's a few positive ones up in North Cardigan Bay and around the North Coast of Wales. Fortunately and unfortunately, a dead angel shot washed up in August 2018 um, in Saundersfoot in South Wales. So we got the Cetacean Stranding Investigation Programme. They came and picked up the angel shark and kept it in the freezer until the summer last year. And unfortunately, we, along with Swansea University, we used the laboratory there and all the partners came together for this one necropsy to find out how or why the angel shark had died. We, we, the, the results were inconclusive. However, the opportunity did provide us with a lot of information about the species. So we managed to gather a range of different morphometric measurements, also a range of DNA samples and tissue samples that are really, really vital. And again, adding to that gene, the DNA bank that we want to carry out in Wales and have to better understand the connectivity of angel sharks with the Welsh coast. Understand the history of angel sharks was a big, a big objective. And one of the ways we did this was we carried out an angel shark history roadshow across Wales, which was different and unique. So we ran five roadshows across Wales from June to March in 2019, and they mostly were held in maritime museums, which were perfect venues. We then did a big press release at the start, which reached over 40 million people globally. And during the events, 497 people attended, and we got 135 new records of angel sharks. And these included a range of photos and memories and we did some audio recordings and we were really grateful to all the people that turned out to these events. They were really successful. Here's just some of the examples that you can see in the bottom there. During the Swansea event, Graham turned up with this photo and he wasn't sure what it was. And um, thankfully he saw the press release and he saw that it was called a monkfish and he came along and then found out it was an angel shark and over 50 years of his life that he was wondering what species it was. But it was an, it was a, it was an amazing picture for him to bring in and we're really grateful for him to share this because it provides us a lot more information of where they were found, when they were caught, and also the biological information. Key element of unlocking the history of angel sharks off the Welsh coast. We then recruited some citizen scientists to help scour through archives, libraries, and museums. And they brought us a range of information and old texts and old photographs and illustrations of angel sharks. In total, we had 15 volunteers that did over 233 hours worth of scouring through museums. But it was worth it with 158 new additional records and a range of great stories. One of them, which was quite a memorable one, is back in 1800, an angel shark was caught off the Welsh coast. And again, it kind of refers to them being quite a rare species, where they brought this angel shark to the beach, put a tent over it and charged people then to come and look at it. And the, the, the proceedings of that then went to the Red Cross and did some great benefits to the local community. And it's things like that are helping us to understand actually how common they were in the past or how rare they were. Another really interesting part that came out of both the Fisher engagement and the, the historic element is the range of names of angel sharks that are off the Welsh coast. Common, more commonly referred to as monkfish or monk. They come with another 15 different names from puppy fish, fiddle fish, um, banjo fish, and jakey shark is another one that was came up in some of the old historic textbooks. But again, that can be quite confusing for especially the monkfish name because recently or in, the, in well, modern times, monkfish now refers to as anglerfish rather than angel shark, which helps us. It was really important because that could be leading to some misidentification of species or mislabeling of species. So trying to gather, distinguishing the two is quite an important factor and understanding that they're both species are referred to as the same. As you can see, there's a few more examples of mongrel skate or shark ray, which refers to it looking more like a escape rather than an actual shark. And here it explains how it kind of came along its name of monk, where it's looking at saying its, it's large pectoral fins resemble more of the, the angelic robes of a monk. And it's just a couple of other names put together and just to see what it's like. And the Welsh name for our angel sharks is Melgi. The illustrations also provide a, a, an interesting time series. So from 1638, there's this illustration of a monkfish, which they've completely drawn it as a monk, as a fish. 
which is interesting because they, this is how they did a drawing back in time. They did it through descriptions um, rather than having the specimen directly there. But as time goes by, the illustrations become more scientific and more correct. So you can see now by 1804, they're, they're amazing watercolours and they have all the features properly. And that's when they'd have start having the specimen to draw right next to them rather than just having a description. And again, here's another really nice one from 1841 of the British fishes. And this again, showing really clear details of the markings and things on the back of the dorsal side of the angel shark. This carries on to modern time where they start going getting drawn again into more cartoony. During the project, we also tried to carry out some field surveys. Uh, the first year of surveys didn't go straight to plan. The weather kind of blew us out a few times. So we did a weekend of surveys when the weather allowed for it. And we had 11 volunteer snorkelers and divers to, eat, to survey possible angel shark habitat or sites, which were gathered as part of this, a fisher collection and a historic collection and see if we can then do some real recent modern surveys on these areas. Unfortunately, no angel sharks were observed during these, these surveys. However, they did provide some really important ground truthing data of the areas where angel sharks were possibly we could be found and, and the habitats did look quite, did look right for the species. And we had a big thank you for all the volunteers that turned up and helped us over the weekend because it was, it was a good day, good, good long days of getting in the water and, and seeing what's about and recording all the habitats and different other potential prey species for angel sharks. Just a, a, a graph to pull together all the data that's been gathered as part of the project so far. It's 2,000 records dating back to 1812. But the first thing to note is this is not a trend of population. Um, there's a lot of different things that cause this graph to keep these large spikes and peaks and troughs in here. As part of the project and work closely with the fishers, we're trying to distangle it between the fisher effort and the number of angel sharks caught. Especially during this, this from the 70s to the late 90s, there was a range of different fishing gears occurring. There's a lot of different fishing efforts. And also the target species also changed during these times. So from the, the late 70s into the late 90s, they were more likely to accidentally catch angel sharks with the fishing gear they were using at the time. However, from the late 90s up to 2019, it's the gears have changed a bit more, the target species have changed, and the amount of the, the areas where some fishes were fishing have also changed. They're less likely to capture angel sharks. And it's through through help through gathering better effort data and working closely with fishes, we're trying to see to have a better understanding of this population and whether there had been any significant declines or is it the, the effort that's having the big um, impact on the number of angel sharks that we see each year? Because as you can see, we still get a couple of angel sharks reported to us each year, which is really exciting for us. And back in 2008, we had nine. Back in 2019, we had three. And this year, we have had a few already. But with all this information, we're collating it all. And we're currently in the process of developing the angel shark action plan. We're also hoping to write a, a scientific paper and summarize all this information into displays in local maritime museums and these are the museums hopefully that we we, we carried the roadshows out too so we can give something back to them but recently we launched a ebook for seven to eleven year olds and it's a great little book it provides a lot of information about angel sharks off the welsh coast about the species the biology but also the heritage and how they're linked to the different parts of welsh communities and different fishing heritage so this is now live on the Angel Shark Project Wales website. So head over there and see what it's like and see whether you can do some of the word searches or find the Angel Shark under the camouflage sand. And it's both in English and Welsh. Thank you and please feel free to get in contact with us, any member of the team um, with any queries or questions regarding the project.